hello beautiful people it's your baby your gay again andre boss queen you're welcome to queen b vlog it's been long i make a video showing my face so guys you all are welcome to queen b vlog if this is your first time to stumble on this youtube channel you're very much welcome just grab a seat by clicking the notification uh, the subscription button to join the family for those who have been supporting queen b vlog i say thank you and god bless you so if you don't know what we do on queen b vlog we preach the word of god we talk about social ills and things that are happening on social media in and out so and i bring to you lifestyle i'm a maid in kuwait so sometimes i do upload video about my lifestyle in kuwait on today's vlog as you have all seen on the title i'll be talking why i left my contract house yes i know some people be saying huh oh, but why you went there why did you left okay guys let's begin this story why i left my t uh, my contract house it's not like they were treating me but no i can never and can never like say bad about my contract madam the woman that brought me here in kuwait she's a very good woman and the family was so so good yes guys she promised to increase my salary by two percent when i complete my two years contract when i came she said if i will complete my contract then i renew she will add my salary by two percent as you all know we are here to hustle and to look for money to help our family back home yeah and i accepted after two years of my contract that is my contract expired uh, september 2nd 2021 and i didn't hear anything again instead the husband increased it by one percent i was like wow so this woman has uh scam me or what i was just perseverance i was just they say okay anyhow let me be managing but as i was managing i have friends who already left their contract house they were like oh being to there is money outside or what you are doing there and who who first of all encouraged me to leave the my contract house was one Ghanaian lady. Oh, I owe her a lot. If not for her, I wouldn't be here. She was like, we always meet at the supermarket. Maybe I'm going to buy. Her own house was near the supermarket. She is also going to buy. We'll just talk and go. That is how we exchange number and we got talking. So she was like, are you still in contract? I was like, yes, I finished my contract. But my madam was like, uh, she will increase my salary but she hasn't increased it the way she promised so i'm just discouraged she was like oh me i'm not more under contract and i receive this amount this amount and when i check her uh, her salary is twice my own i receive as a contract i was like what is the need let me try it outside here and she was the first person that encouraged me i was still scared i was still afraid i said her what if i want to leave my contract has and maybe i'm being caught all those things and i contacted my other friend she's like a big sister to me she has been here and she has been out of her contract house for close to three years she was like yes if you can come out it's okay we have where we rent you can pack i will pack our bags there and you go you to work I was thinking these things happen about three to four months and the, the, the month I finally decided to uh, left my contract was last year March I was like oh god please help me I know what I'm going to do it's not it's it's not good but at least I have finished my contract means whatever they spend on me I have I have exhausted it and I have even added five months to it God me I, I came here to look for a greener pasture yes the family is good but hey I did not come here to look for good people I came here to look for money yeah that's money I came to look for money to help my family back home we all know as the breadwinner and as the only child I have to give a better life for my mother and my daughter I was like wow I'm here for the money not good people I was thinking and that month I was waiting for my salary to to leave the house hmm. it was not easy before then in february i called they gave me a driver's number so i called him he came to the house mind you my house there was a camera so i decided to off the camera before giving my things to the driver to take so that it will not show in the camera the, the driver took the things and 
I was supposed to leave, I think another one week, I had another one week before leaving the house, finally, <laughs> that day was not easy, guys, I was like, who oh, am I going to leave, am I going to leave, so that is the why part, why I left, is because my madam lied to me that she would increase my salary, now how I left the house, this is the process that I, how I tempo run for my contract has, that day was not really easy, because, um, I have never walked alone in COVID, like going out alone, no. The, the highest place I went was a supermarket near our house, not even a big supermarket. They call it Bakala. It's not really big, like a store. That is the only place I go alone. Any other place, even I'm going to the big supermarket to buy, the, the, they will take me there to buy. So that day I was like, and I asked the driver that carried my things that, how much are you going to carry me from my city to where I'm going to put my things? If you hear the money this man called, he, he told me 70 k and 70 k is how much? 140,000 francs. My God, I had that money like that. I called on my sister. I said, with this type of money, me, I'm not sure to leave this household. How can I pay only 70 kd she said, oh, yes, that's how it is. I was still thinking, but she told me that there is another option. If there is a big supermarket near our house, I can leave the house, and from that big supermarket, the, I can have a taxi that will bring me to the location. That is where uh, she is renting, where I will pack my things then before I look for another maid job. Ha, huh, guys, that day was not easy. I think it was on a Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. My madam, in fact, everybody was in the house that day. I already packed my things. Now, how to come out of the house is another problem. We were walking two of us. I have my Philippine colleague. Now, if I want to go, she will see me. She was, um, I, I was a cook. It means I cook and she cleans. Guys, it was not easy. Ah, this story, eh? it was not easy. I needed to be telling this story. I'm wearing that my uh, dress, that my dress that I tempo run with it. So, the first time I brought my things, she was coming down from the stairs. She saw me. I was like, oh, I'm looking for something. Hey, have you seen that? I was just pretending. I had to throw all my things down and start as if I'm searching for something. But meanwhile, I am not searching for anything. I already passed all my things and I put it in the garbage, the plastic for garbage, so that nobody will understand. So there was one table my madam told me to carry. She told us to carry and throw to the, in the next street. She don't want it in front of our house. So that table was just there at the backyard. So in order for me to take that advantage to leave the house, I needed to go and carry that table. Oh, Sawe speaking. So I went and carried that table. Then I hold my, my back. My stuff are inside that bag. You think it's a grab a um, debt I'm going to throw. That is how I carry the table. And my, mind you, my madam was in the parlor. They were seeing me, everything. Even when I went out, when I went out, I just put my head straight. I was not looking left and right to even make to, to somebody to even wise. That is how I left, guys. Pam, 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 pam. I, w I went now to the next street. I threw that table and I carried out my plastic. That is how my heart was beating even 50 times more than the usual beating. I called my sister in Cameroon. That is how she just keep me company on the phone. She was like being to don't be afraid. I'm praying for you. See guys, it was not easy. I was just scared. I just I was just moving around. I don't know where to go. The only thing I want to do is to to halfway I can have a taxi but I have never walked alone in Kuwait I was just roaming roaming enter the street go I was just roaming at times I will even enter a compound thing that is a street then you go the gate is blocked my god that day God was with me I came out I was just moving and finally I I reached at a street I needed to to change into something because I was still in my maid dress so I had to take a track suit up and down I wore it on top of that my maid dress and I continued the journey. Finally I came now to the to the main road that is like I don't know I'm going to put it. The main road, a public road, that taxi, everything. The first taxi I asked was not going, and the second one was going. Guess how much I paid? I paid two and a half kd. That is three thousand francs. But that was a journey that somebody asked me to pay one hundred and forty francs. That is seventy kd. So, guys, that is my story. Why I left and how 
I left the house. Well, some people will say I did bad. Yes, I did bad, but I don't owe those people because I finished my contract. Whatever they spent of me, I exhausted it and I even added five months. So that is why that is the reason I left my house. I came here to Warzo to look for money and help my family. So by the grace of God, I'm still a mate. I'm not doing another thing. I'm still a mate in Kuwait. The, the only advantage of being outside your contract house is the salary increase is very high. For example, my salary that I was taking in my contract house is times three what I'm receiving here. All my line money, we are here to work. So that is why I left and that is how the journey uh, of how I left ended. So guys, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and join us anytime we do another video like this. I still remain your girl, your baby, Andrea Bosqueen. I love you guys so, so very much. Stay blessed. Bye.